What's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, this is a special show. Now, I know I've said that uh, about 500 times before, but this mm-hmm. time I mean it. Wow. Show we number gotta- 500. Show number 500, Drew. I went, well, I didn't introduce you yet, so shut up. Act like I didn't say your name. Um, Drew, Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? I'm good, man. I got my sleeveless tuxedo on. I'm celebrating. <laughs> Strong. Strong style. I Jean-Claude Van Damme style. I feel you. I feel you. Just got to make sure you don't get that knot on your head. Um, <laughs> uh, man, I, I want to introduce my guest today. Uh this dude, like, inspired me indirectly. He kind of inspired me to do comedy. Like, I was I was a stripper dude, and this dude was running around Brooklyn and Bronx and stuff and opening up shows and stuff. Um, give it up for my man, the handsome and illustrious uh, Drew Frazier, y'all. Give it up for Drew Frazier, y'all. Yeah, Drew here. Thank you so very much for having me. I really appreciate you. What's that. going on, doggy man? I ran into you the other day, and I hadn't right. seen you. I hadn't seen you before the pandemic, but I mean, yeah, I, they, I think it might have been a little longer than that. Longer than that. I think last time we we actually saw each other physically was at your house doing the pod. Wow, has it yeah. been that long? Yeah. Exactly, that, that was it. When we saw each other physically, yeah. How long ago was that, Drew? So we're talking. Well, you know, we've been down on lockdown literally two years, so maybe two and a half. Wow, that's crazy, bro. It's so good to see you, man. There's a lot of, you know, I love Pleasure having dudes on, on here that I really genuinely like. I was, we were talking about this off air, how, uh, what happened to Drew? Drew's still on? No, no, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, you still, um, Drew, Drew inspired me to do comedy. Like, Drew was one of the dudes that was doing comedy, um, and I was, I was running around stripping shaking my dick for a living and I <laughs> but I wanted I wanted to do comedy instead of now where you shake your dick for pleasure. Yeah, well yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, well I get paid for it too, but let's uh let's not get into that. Mm, um yeah. and Drew I watched Drew and and these guys Drew and Brooklyn and do you know do the all the all the dudes that you know and they I wanted to do comedy and I was afraid to do it because I didn't think nobody would take me seriously. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And Drew, Drew was one of the first dudes that took me. Now nah, come, I mean, you can come do some time and get you get some work. And Drew was one of the first dudes that gave me work. So I want to say I, I I appreciate it, my brother. And uh, and it's good to it's good be good to be part of the club now. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah, and you, and you 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 did the work. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. You didn't you didn't you didn't come in nobody coattail. You did the work. Yeah, that's yeah. very important. So everybody can respect you. Yeah, Drew's a fucking technician, bro. Drew is a fucking tip. Drew, Drew writes material and lays it just bang, 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 kills them all the time. We worked together the other day at the comic strip. How you been, brother? I've been absolutely fantastic, man. Just weathering the storm of this pandemic, but everything is good. You always, you always, uh, one thing I can say about you, you always have a, have a, a positive outlook on things, even when it's shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, <laughs> you always I got to, little... man. I, I got to. There's so many people doing worse than me. So, hey, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, Harry always says to me, yeah, some people don't got fresh water, my dog. Yeah, you know what I mean? They they all about it. clean drinking water at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. If you got so, that, that's better than 99% of yeah. the world, bro. It's beautiful. You, you uh, got a girl or were you still just putting up numbers? <laughs> nah, but the, I put the, the numbers game. I put that aside probably about three years ago. Really? Yeah, probably about three years ago. So you've been with somebody for three years? Yes. Really? Wow. And we, we have gone through the gauntlet of the relationship. The, really? When I tell you the gauntlet, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a whole show of yeah. what she and I have been, had been through to the point where, uh, as a black man, I had to go to therapy. Oh, really? boy. What? That's a really? lot. What? That's a lot. What? When a black man is in therapy with a relationship, that, that's a whole that's a whole other ballgame right there. And now yeah. you're at the point where you're admitting that you went to therapy. Yeah, so it, that's yeah. you. Step one is a black man going to therapy. <laughs> step two is a black man speaking admitted publicly it, about admitted therapy. It, admitted it. And wow. I, I, I highly uh, um, advise that everybody do it. It is absolutely amazing. When I say I've learned so much uh, for myself and, and how to deal with a female. Uh, when you when you when you're coming out of turmoil, I mean, it's, it's everything's cool when everything's smooth. 
But when you're going through turmoil and so forth and so on, you, you, you might need that third person to help you navigate your way back into the relationship. So that's what we did. And right now we're just a beautiful place. Now, when you say help you navigate, the, was it me? Are we talking about you being a, a piece of shit? And of China? course, of course, <laughs> of course. Now, I, you know, I don't want to. Well, I mean, you're in a different place. So, I mean, the statute yes. of limitations. But no, I want to say Drew was a dude who put the numbers up, baby. He mm -hmm. stayed. Uh, 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 Drew, Drew, I, Drew, triple Coyne, doubles, Drew, consistent triple doubles. Cri yo, triple doubles. Drew used to say, I've seen Drew say this to a girl. Uh, uh, a good looking dude like me, he used to use that as his, that was his pronouns, you know? People trying to, right? You mean a, a, a good looking dude like me? Well, yeah, that's how he would start sentences. So, um, confidence uh, exude. Yes. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, Drew, were you, was your, was your dad a, a player player? Was he a dude who kind of had that? Well, my, my parents were always in the entertainment field. Really? I did not know that. In yeah, what well, field? I mean, like not not in, not an entertainment field as entertainers, but there was always, you know, parties at the house, you know, social gatherings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So our house was always the place to be and place to go. You got brothers and sisters or no? Oh yeah, Brady Bunch. Really? How many? At three and three. Really? Was mm -hmm. it Brady Bunch? You mean really Brady Bunch was hers and his or or all your your... No, it was all, all same, same mom, same dad, but it was you know three boys, three girls. Wow, I did not know that. I did yeah. not. So there was the party house with everybody in there, huh? Right, everybody. So I remember one time when my my father bought a, because you know from Boston, we bought a, we bought what we call a triple decker. Boston's known for the triple deckers, which is a, a house with the three family house. Okay. And okay. my father kicked out the uh, tenants on the third floor, and just turned it into a club. <laughs> <laughs> And that was where we, that's where we throw the parties up on the third on the third floor. And did house. he charge or just it was just nah, good, the good time? Just, just parties, just chilling. Just that's show. crazy. And then they Jeez. had then my father, my father and my uncle, they had a uh, a underground kind of like uh, like a little speakeasy, speakeasy, you know, yeah, type of club, yeah. Joe it, sent it, me it, type it shit. Went, <laughs> it went, it went, it went down over there. It went down over there. Yeah. That's crazy. And you were part of that. Like, were you? Well, not really. I mean, I was, I was a kid. I was a kid. Yeah, but, but I mean, did you sneak in? Was, was it like a thing where you could sneak in because it was? A, I mean, because well, I mean, the club was in the house, not to speak. Well, I, I, no, I never went to the club, but the mm. house, of course. You know, you're in the house, but not the yeah. club. Yeah. yeah, that and it was just parties, just well, just parties, parties. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever adults did back then <laughs> in, in in the eighties. That's what they did. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Good, Harry. I didn't mean to cut oh, you. I was going to say, I wanted to know more about like what led to the therapy, because not a lot. It's got to be some oh. intense stuff that led to the therapy. Well, most men are not going to go to therapy unless they are coaxed by the female. Mm. And if you are trying to get back in the good graces, hell, you go ice skater, you do whatever the hell. You <laughs> <say>. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. If you see it, if you see a man ice skating with a female, he either hasn't gotten the pussy yet. <laughs> or you're trying to try to get back in. So, yeah. So oh. I'm, I'm in therapy because that's what she demanded in order for us to continue on. And uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Now, um, here's what I'm thinking. So you're you're kind of fought. You're trying to get back in the good graces. You like, right. look, whatever. What made her special enough for you to to change it to, to, to kind of do that you know because very, i mean very, you've very always very put question. the numbers up and you, right. you were like yeah. well, you know i don't chase them i replace yeah. them i, I replace know. them this one this one was irreplaceable yeah and this, what made one, what made her re irreplaceable she was everything me what do you mean explain that she was everything. well every man every woman has they 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 their their list their boxes they check off whether it be actually written down on paper or it's in your head all the boxes checked off Every single solitary thing. And what I were the, knew what I could were the not... boxes? What were the boxes for you? Wait, well, you're talking uh, uh, sexual attraction, physical uh. attraction, education, mm. uh, financial stability, um, love, friendship. I've never ever mm. dated a girl who was my best friend. I never could mm. ever understand that concept. 
When right. people say, oh, I married my best friend. If I married my best friend, he's a guy. I mean, I can't marry my best friend. Right, right, but I've, right. I've never had a female that was my best friend, and she is that. Right. Now, did she were you were you guys friends before you dated, or did it did it did it fall into that or no? No, just, we, were just, just we we met. I was walking into a club and she was already in the club. Mm. I saw her and she had already seen me. Mm. And it's very, very funny to tell the story. I walked into the club um, with some friends and I saw her from you know across the, the club and I was like, oh, she's a pretty girl. Mm. But you know, I looked at her and I said, yeah, it's too much, too much high maintenance. I yeah. don't want to deal with I don't want to deal with nothing that looks like that. Right. And so we're, we ended up being in the same VIP area and um, I was paying her no attention, mm-hmm. none whatsoever. Right. So on pur- made, purposefully, uh, purposefully, uh, 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 not not to attract her to me. Right, right, right. I just I just didn't want to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. And after she saw that, she made sure that um, I I she let me know that she was interested. Mm. So I'm standing in one corner and she comes over and she starts dancing around me with her girlfriends. Mm. And I said to my friend, I said, listen, I just, she wants some attention. Right. So I tapped on the shoulder. I said, listen, you got five minutes. Let's go outside and have a conversation. So we went outside, had the conversation, and uh, we've been together ever since. Wow. Wow. It's funny because I mean, when you talk about that, it, it, it's something I teach to young dudes. There's mm-hmm. something called the proximity rule, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Proximity rule is that, you know, you ever in the club and every time you look up, you catch eyes with the, the same girl and you're like, God damn, every time I look up, she's there. Right. Um, it, that's because she's trying to she's trying to let give you the opportunity to mm-hmm. get in the game. Right. And 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 I've had guys say, well, I, you know, sometimes it's just coincidence. I go, it's never coincidence right. because one of the let's flip it on on it on it on the other side of let's flip the coin if mm-hmm. you're a creepy dude and mm-hmm. a woman feels that this dude is creepy or he she feels he's unsafe you will never see her yeah she'll make sure to get on the opposite <laughs> side yeah of everything mm-hmm. y'all could be in the same bathroom stall and you won't know where she's at she will not be available to you so the simple act of somebody making themselves available doesn't mean she wants to fuck you but she's going Ah, this might be a yes. prospect. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and you find yes. that to be the case. And it's what's interesting is guys understand it when you explain it. You know, the dude who's a creep, you, you know, this this woman disappeared. She makes sure that she is he is uh, she is unavailable to him. But the same right. true is the same mm-hmm. is truth the other way. If she, right. if she's available to you and may, you find her in your proximity, it's because yeah. there's, an, there's an attraction, an opportunity. And then they're usually just waiting for us to fuck it up right. say, <laughs> to uh-huh. see what we could do. If we could if we could talk ourselves out of the right. I, I, I always tell people talk less. Less oh, is yeah. always more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Say, a f- say a few words and then exchange the number and let her go. Yeah. And then what you do, if you're really smooth, you get the number and you have a conversation through the text messages. In the club. Oh, oh, when uh, that's kind of hot. Never, I've never heard that. Wait, that's what? It, One more time here. One more time. That is fire. You, you exchange numbers, and you continue the conversation through text. In not the talking. club. While you're in, in the, the club. club. In the club. We were now, literally. I, I kind of understand that, but I want you to explain to me why that's so powerful. If you what. One, because it keeps her intrigued with you because mm-hmm. she's on the phone. And especially in this day and age now where every female has their phone. Yeah. They're always looking at their phone. Now, if she's already, you, you exchange numbers with her and you're in the club. Right. There is nothing more exciting than you talking to her through the phone while you're sitting over there or you're sitting somewhere she can't really see you. But yeah. she knows you're in the club and you're talking. Or to maybe her. you're in a conversation with somebody else or maybe even in a conversation with another girl at the time texting her at the same time and she can see you, which is even even more intriguing. Like, there's a whole whole thing where I I um I haven't talked about this in a lot. You know, women as a as a rule um codify men. They they qualify you. So yes. a woman wants if a woman is seeing uh, is your widow woman and she's her attraction to you uh qualifies you as a viable 
entity or viable choice in in, in itself. Mm -hmm. And so the well, fact that other women find you attractive. Yes. Is well, a man, a man is judged by the, by the company that he keeps. A yeah. man is judged by the woman that is on his arm. Right. If, you, if your woman, you know, belongs to the streets, yeah. then that's how you will be perceived as. If your right. woman is you know, something very, a very high class stature, and that's how you'll be perceived as. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Um, wow. I've never I've never heard that ever. Harry, you ever heard that? No, in the, that is, no, not purposefully. No, I, I, I literally am now, almost you, mad at myself that I didn't think of that. Well, now, Drew, would you be like, what What do you say to her when you exchange numbers? Like, hey, I'm going to go do my thing. I got friends I got to entertain. Like, how do you no, 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 present no. that? You, you want to make her at a priority. So if you're in the club and, you know, you, you got the number and you're speaking to her in the club, you know, you're like, you know, you ask her, hey, how you doing? You're all right. Are you right over there? You need something to drink? You know, there's nothing there's nothing more sexy and attracting to the opposite sex when you're talking to them in the club, but you're not talking to them. Mm. Yeah. No, women don't really want a man all in their face. Right. So in the club, you know, you make five minute conversation, no more than that. Take the number and boom. And then what happened was later on that evening, as you know, I sent her a picture of myself. She sent me back a picture. And um, a nice picture of me on, that I already had in, in my phone. She sent back a picture of her phone. Mm -hmm. And then later on, as the, as the club wind down, I asked her, I said, so what you doing after this? Mm -hmm. She goes, nothing, what's up? I said, let's go get some breakfast. Mm -hmm. smooth, as, smooth as glass. I, I said to her, actually, I said, are you leaving with me? Mm -hmm. And she said, yes. Oof. Nice. Smooth as hell, smooth as hell. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want to talk a little bit about the reason why that works. Uh, like one of the things that you said, you know, that a woman doesn't want a guy all in her face. Um, right. One of the things is, is there's always I, and I think that uh, the empathy, your, your personal mm -hmm. empathy to understand. And I, I haven't talked about this in a while, but every time a woman goes out with a dude, um, rape and murder is on the docket like that is some that is a consideration mm -hmm. of her that she has to consider if this person is, is dangerous and if he's that safe is that is and correct so, very good point very very good point so what's interesting is even that constant the texting throughout the night it builds the trust it's almost it like a, it's mm -hmm. a, and it builds the trust at a distance where mm -hmm. she can feel comfortable because the worst thing so a lot of times you you know like it, it and i and i i don't I, I knock it, but I don't knock it like a lot of the pickup artist stuff. Right. One mm -hmm. of the things that they uh, uh, would one of the pickup techniques is a time constraint. So if they break into a into a, a bunch of girls, they go, listen, I got to catch up with my friends. But I just wanted to say this real quick. What it does is it it kind of gives them a, a it puts them at ease that you're not going to be a guy who in, mm -hmm. interrupts their whatever's whatever yes. social experience there, that this is yes. just this is a quick interruption and then I'm out and then I'm gone. Yes. And and, and I'm not back. you can get back to what you're doing and still get have your where yeah. you're you get guys who intrude in that and then mm -hmm. stay there and they're like, oh, this yeah, and yeah. then they're giving you their the other, back. Exactly. And the other girls are like, yo, who is he? Why is he here? What, what, yeah. What's going on? You know, <laughs> I, I let them get back to their girls and so forth. And then it, it makes more of intrigue for her to want to be with you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Fucking yeah, so brilliant. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm then, an you know, old you dog. Cre you, cre you create the safe space by you tell her girlfriends, well, listen here, here's my information. Now her girlfriends know, okay, oh shit, he's giving me your, his information just in case. So it. they know now Wow. If, if push was to come to shove, I know how to find, get you. They can find your body. Yeah. They can find you. And that, and then what's even the cons good. even the consideration of that, right? The the, the open consideration of that says mm -hmm. to her and to her friends, yes, I I get this, I get yes. that you're women, mm -hmm. and I and I and yes. I have empathy of what the, yeah. in the context of what you're doing, and because of that, the mm -hmm. fear that fear element of is this motherfucker going to kill me just dissipates in a way you're giving right. away all your listen here you go here's my fingerprints here's my here's the yeah. last four of my social security if you need to get her you can get her so and so and so and so that yeah. man oh that's brilliant that's ease. brilliant yeah. 
And never, Harry, had, never heard that. Have you ever heard never, that? Never heard that trick. Fucking no. brilliant, dog. Never heard that. I like that one. And you yeah. know, Goddamn. you know, Drew, I'm an old dog. So if you could right. teach me some new tricks, that's oh, yeah. well, that's you know, all. In this new day, day and age of dating, all those things have to be applied now. Yeah, yeah. So Drew, it's uh, it starts out amazing. How does it end up not, for lack of a better term, going downhill? Or where do the problems arise? That's Drew, Drew ain't shit. Well, <laughs> boy, boy, here you go. No, not that I, not that I have was never. I was always a good. No, uh, I didn't mean it like you know how. I mean. No, no, I'm, I know she. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I am, I am a man. I mean, that's plain and simple. But I've, I've always, well, not always been, but in this business that we are in, a lot of people um, just want to be along for the ride. They're there. They're, they're, they're happy to be on the bus. Because you're because of the fame and because the of fame the prestige, and the, the money, and so yeah. they're not they're not going to make any waves. So a lot of women that uh, I probably was dating were just happy to be on the bus, and they're not making any waves. Mm-hmm. So wh- whoever else is on the bus, you know, they they they're, they're going to look the other way. Right. This, pati- this particular young lady was not having any of that. Right. Okay. Nobody nobody else is going to be on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one on the bus. And so because of that, uh, she was a very good detective. I mean, I've never seen anybody with the detective skills that this young lady has. Right. Unbelievable. Really? So everything that I thought I was getting away with, uh uh-uh. You weren't. All came to light. And she was patient. Said, she was patient. She was building up a case. I like it. She was building oh, up no, a no, dossier. No, no, no. Oh no, no, there was no, no building up no case. Oh, oh. The, the arrest, the arrest came right away. Really? <laughs> immediately. Really? The indictment came down immediately. <laughs> there was no there was no undercover, nothing. I mean, no sting that, operation, oh, nothing. That, nothing. No, wow, no, is is Steve Bannon gonna come in and uh, testify uh, that it was uh, you're under arrest immediately. <laughs> wow. Immediately. Mm-hmm. Well, women are great with that. The the beauty is women are amazing at they're great gift givers. Because uh-huh. they pay attention to the detail, but then that yeah. same detail is what will get you caught. They have <laughs> yeah. that same ability. You're like, how did you track down this baseball card? You're like, ah, I got my skills. Yeah. But that's also exactly. you got to be wary because that's exactly. also going to burn you in the other end. Got to burn, got to burn. And she told me, she said, whatever you're doing, I will find out. Oh, and boy, did she ever. Really? Now, mm-hmm. was that a big blow up? Was it a blow up or was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a blow up. It was the it was a, a breakup. I mean, we pretty broke up. Now, Probably. were you were you committed to this? Like, supposedly you were supposed to be committed to this and then kind of oh, yeah. had your yeah, had all your minions. Oh, yeah. All that. All that. It was a committed relationship that Eve that turned into an engagement. Really? And so you, oh, yeah. you had that where that went left. The engagement yes. and everything went left. That went left. And wow. we, we, we literally in three years, we probably broke up 10 times. Really? Wow. And just kept coming yeah. back. And then kept coming back. And there was so there was something you kind of knew that there was something special because you you kind of yes. couldn't sh- couldn't shake it. Couldn't shake it. She couldn't shake me. I could. She couldn't. I couldn't shake her. It was just. It was just something that was meant to be. Mm-hmm. And then, unfortunately, she ended into another relationship with somebody else. But that relationship was really more or less to just completely try to get away from me. Right now, they, they always say in, in a relationship, the best way to get over somebody, get back in is, the game, is yeah, to under get somebody. under somebody, under somebody. Right. not necessarily so, because if it's absolutely true, you're going to get under that person. But at the same time, you're under that person. You think about the other person. Yeah, and unless uh, unless, of course, the, the one the one you're under has got credentials that far exceeds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you get but somebody better. Rare. That's rare. Well, you, know what? rare. You, you would say that because the average woman will ne- gravitate to another man that she sees that she can be with in long term, not just physically. OK, you see, now, 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 now there's a difference. So. I'm going to have to. Um, you bet. No, I'm just going to have to punch this in, plug this into something. Oh, um, go for it. I'm going to come back in two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, All right. no worries, All right. Drew. Hold that point. So Dante, I'll say I'll say this while Drew uh, plugs the computer in. Uh, 
it is, you know, the best way is to get underneath somebody, but that doesn't mean you necessarily shake them. But I'll say this in my wake. I know that there have been a couple people who are with permanent partners after me. Okay. Like they had to find somebody like wanted to be with me, wanted to be with me long term. And then the next person they're with, they get married within not that long after. Yeah, but I how does like. that how does that now I've had that, but I've always had that where that goes to shit. And Almost then definitely, and, but and then it, they're, they're knocking knocking on your door or hitting you up. Oh no, no doubt about that. That happens too. But I'm saying <laughs> that'll happen where somebody's like, Why can't we be a thing? And you go, I just don't want to be a thing. And then the next thing you know, you hear like within a year, you're like, Jesus, why? And that's because they want they wanted it badly. They wanted that. Like I had a I definitely had a girl who married somebody who looked just like me. That's a little weird. Right, 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 right. That's a little creepy. Well, I've also seen somebody who who got into, you know, like who wanted wanted the a relationship like you like what Drew was saying. Right. Wanted Drew, like Drew was saying, I wanted wanted the wanted the relationship. You weren't giving her the really he wasn't giving her the relationship. And then she went and got married and moved away and stuff. But then it's it seems to be a lot of a lot of times it's lackluster because of the fact that you got to get some if you're looking for if you're looking for a replacement that never works out. You you got to you know, you, you want to go you want to go from a Benz to a Hummer. You know, what I mean, you don't want to go from a Benz to another Benz. You know, what I mean, it's it's like it because, can't just be another car. Well, it's also because if you have the history Right. Everything that he does like you reminds you of her of of uh, reminds her of you. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like it almost like it becomes an extension. OK. So as I was saying. Most women will gravitate to another man who they feel is either the opposite of already what they have or is a financial um, how I could say step up, but the one thing that they can never replace is the emotion. Right. Mm. So unless they feel the emotion with that other person, it's, it's not going to last. Yes, yeah, goes to shit. It's not. It's not going to last. So no. even though the other person that she gravitated towards may have been in her eyes um, uh, a a replacement for me, right. She couldn't replace the emotion. Right. right. And the emotion will always, always take over. And and I think the, the the similarities between you and him just reminds her of you. Now. You don't think so? Now, see, he's the complete opposite. Well, if me. he's the opposite, if he's most not the, women, most women are not going to they're not going to gravitate towards the same. Because remember, they're trying to get away from you. Yeah. Well, so I mean, I've seen, well, I've, I've, seen it, them. I've seen it both ways. I've seen, seen it both. both okay. Yeah, I've seen it right. both ways where where she gets to do like Harry was saying, just a chick that he dated, dated a dude who actually looked like him. Do you got know what married, I mean? that, got married to a dude. Yeah. But oh, that wow. usually, but that usually goes to shit, too, because what you because there's a there's a there's a still a connection like you can't mm-hmm. replace. Like, why would you get the right. fake? The, 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 you know, the, the imitation when you have the real yeah. thing. But I also understand what you're saying. It's something totally opposite where it's so, like to, to, totally yeah. opposite. and something that she felt safe. She felt safe over there. Yeah. Safe is never sexy, though. Yes. Safe. Exactly. <laughs> safe is never sexy. Yeah. There's no excitement. There's no passion. There's no, you know, you're, you're laying in your bed at night wondering. Yeah. And not not necessarily where, where, not necessarily. Yeah, women, women want excitement. Yeah, but not necessarily say is he gonna knock me upside the head. But there, you know what I mean? Not yeah. not in that. There's but no, there's, there's no, a, there's no chicks texting him. Yeah. No, but nobody's nobody's in his DMs. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, this he's is real not out safe. of the club. You know, he walks into the club. You know, fifty two thousand chicks don't know him. Yeah. You know, it's that is that type of safe space. But yeah. that safe space after a while becomes boring. Boring. Yeah. 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 Becomes boring. See, every woman usually wants. A, you want it all. You want they, both. They, they, they want a, They want a, a, a guy that every woman wants, but they want him to only want her. Yeah. 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 And so 
that is that is how I changed my behavior to put her in a safe space. So now, you know, we're in a, we're in a great space now because of that. Now, now, but but I think here's an interesting thing. You also don't want to change who you are. I used to say this all the time. A woman falls yes. in love with you for everything that you are. She spends the rest of the relationship trying to change you into everything that you're not. If uh-huh. she succeeds, she will dump you for a guy who is what you were yes. when right. she met you. So, right. you know, there's that dichotomy. And so right. the 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 charisma, the attractiveness, uh-huh. and yes. this, I said, you got to still keep your tools. Oh, you still keep that. I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm still the, uh, uh, very attractive to other chicks. Right. I'm still exciting. Right. You know, social, I'm still, the, I'm still, still social inter- and, and, yeah. and uh, yeah, still the intellectual thug that I've always been. Right, right. You know, you know, you get a master's degree, but I got a pistol on the bed. Right, very right, exciting. right, right. Very exciting. <laughs> oh, women love that. Oh, I can go to a board meeting or I can shoot it up. Either one. Good. <laughs> they love it. So all, all those components still stay. And then, but now she's safe. She feels a lot safer. That's the most yeah. important thing, you know. Yeah, and knows that the, the 5,200 women still know him. Yes, And, exactly. and still want a slice. Yes. Still would like to get a slice, but can't right. get a slice. But yeah. But because it's his decision. That is correct. So she's, she's <laughs> and not, in a really, really and, good And not that he can't, but just correct. that he won't. That he yeah. doesn't. Yes. There you go. That's what they yeah. want. Yeah, that's a yeah, that, that goes to the principles of, of women qualifying other women, but the fact that you when you create a bidding war and other women are attractive yeah. mm-hmm. to you, it's the, it's, you know, it's yeah. the reason why J- Jay Z and Beyonce are still together. Yeah. Cardi B and uh, and Offset are still together. Yeah, you know, my man, my man made a very very funny joke about Beyonce and uh, and uh, Jay Z, where he said, "If you throw up a bag of Skittles, you're going to get hit by fifteen thousand of them." Mm-hmm. That's how many chicks want Jay Z every day, but right. he only fucked with one. Bitch, you 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 in good. You get you you, you 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 should be counting your blessings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he only he, fucked where, with one. Where where's that red one? Where was the red one? I yeah, you know, they all these skills hit me, but he only yeah. fucked with one. Girl, you yeah. count your blessings. Yeah, yeah. Now you have to look at the opposite. The the, the opposite of that too. As attractive as be as Beyonce is, no man is going to approach her. Right. They're not going to approach her. She has to approach them. Right. Because you know, she's they, uh, because they don't want to deal with the rejection. Yeah. Of, they, and they, don't th- deal with they already know she's with somebody. Right. But they're not, they're not going to approach her. She has to approach them. Now, whereas Jay-Z, on the other hand, oh, please. Yeah. He got, yeah. He got 50 million chicks whispering in his ear. I, I don't care. What's up? She'll never know. Yeah, yeah. No man will ever go to Beyonce and be like, he'll never know. He will never say that. Um, no. It won't happen. Uh, will not happen. You would have in your in your heyday, no? no I think Drew. Not at all. I, uh, not at all. You would have bragged about it, True? Dre, no, Dre. I, I would never I would never I, I would never have approached her because she got somebody. You never approached somebody who had oh boy. Mm. No, they, they always approach me. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, you said oh, yeah, you said yeah, because yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Now remember, I remember, I'm the I'm the entertainer, so they always approach me. I, right, I would never right. have to approach them. Yeah, right. I, I'm I'm just thinking, uh, but you you'll find this this the same true as when you have somebody who you you'll find a very attractive women a lot of times don't get approached because of because most guys are intimidated by her beauty and and so they that's just, what I that's what I just said. They're, yeah, they're yeah. Okay, I them. see what you. I, okay, yeah. you're not saying just because. Of Jay, you're saying in, uh, also because of the fact well, that yeah, well, not not necessarily. You have to understand, Beyonce's only really attractive because she's a singer and she's a a, bil- a billionaire, right? You know, I mean, I'm, I live right around the corner from uh, Marcy Project. There's 1,500 Beyonces in their projects. Yeah, yeah. They they they, they, they just they can't sing. <laughs> yeah, they don't have, they yeah. Don't, they don't have a record there, but they yeah, don't but have you but you know what I think the magic is to that is you having an understanding of this. Right. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Most dudes don't have an understanding. Most dudes Correct. are innocent. And I and I think that comes to 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 being an, an entertainer. It's like even when uh-huh. I, was, you know, even when I was in the stripper game, it's like I yeah, you all, you know, it makes you like yes. almost like you have a vagina. 
Like right, everybody, right. everybody's trying yes. to get in the club. And right, so exactly. when you understand that, I, I'll tell you a really interesting thing with me when I was before I started stripping mm-hmm. or when right. I first started stripping, I had a, a very abusive chick that I was dating that I was in college with. And mm-hmm. she was, you know, came from a really abusive kind of household like her, her, her pops would punch her mom in the eye and then she wow. would she would hit him in, in the front he of would, yeah he would go to sleep and she would smack him in the head with a with a black frying pan with the eye Damn. i mean they would they used to go at it they still together today um right. it's kind of volatile shit but well, she I was, mean, that's how it was that's how it was in the 70s oh yeah that's how it yeah, was. yeah 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 mom very, and pop would stab each other and everybody would sit down and have dinner yeah, yeah, very volatile. There was, there was no shit. domestic violence. Oh yeah, yeah. This it, it is was, just it was, we we had a fight. That's it what was it was. Marriage. Yeah, it was marriage. That's what they call it, marriage. Right? Yeah, that's what it was. And me and your mama stayed together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but like she was very abusive and just, and I I didn't come from like a, a an abusive kind of, you know, my my parents were never physically abusive, and she was like very abusive, like emotionally abusive. And yeah. at the, early on, I was going like she was you ain't shit and this and that and the other. And I was mm-hmm. like goofy, like, right, yeah. why, why when you why, why do you have to act like this? Why? why? And and then I would go out and, and do strip shows and it'd be 850 women chanting my name. And it didn't right. even matter because I didn't care. But yes. what happened was that that consistency of that started to erode away her the spell on me. Because right. I was like, this don't really make sense. It's 850 women. They, they love me. And this one chick is telling me I ain't yeah. like some something, something's wrong yeah. here. And that's and, and it, it kind of built my self-esteem up. So then when I understood what my value was, it's, and I think what. Yes. I yes. think what you're talking about, too, is, is your insights come from you understanding what your value was. Correct. What, what got you to that place? Well, how did you get to that place? Where you had an understanding of what your value was, or was the therapy? There, well, well, no, I mean before that because you you always had that the swag. Well, I mean, I, I, I well, yeah, well, you know, like I said earlier, every relationship that I was in, people were always just happy to be on the bus. But I, I'm saying pre that, what was the thing like? So you're coming up as a little kid, you oh, doing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, other 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 people. Remember, other people will see your worth before you do. Yeah. So, sure. sure. Was that parents or was it not I, necessarily I, parents, but outside influences? So you're talking your 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 you know your your friends, other women. Other women are always what validates a man. Yeah. It's never really other men. So that was a thing. It's that women. was a thing. You were the guy that other women liked. Exactly. And that but just, I didn't know what I I didn't know what I had. Right, right. They would tell me. You know, it's a funny thing, and I I had this debate with somebody about about you know the whole pimp game, that um nobody decides that they, they don't wake up. I mean, they do, but not really. They, nobody wakes up and decides they want to be a pimp. Mm-hmm. What happens is somebody tells you that you're a Correct. pimp. You yes. like because for you to even conceptually understand that a woman would sleep with other men, take that money and give it to you. It's not even a concept mm-hmm. at, that you understand. I mean, even if you've heard of it, you know, I right. remember the first time that somebody said that to me. I was I would fuck somebody, sell my pussy for you. And I was, you know, I was like, what? what? Yeah. Like, yeah. and you're like, you would. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And then you're like. All right, all right, let's let's see how that works. So exactly. that first one, I, so I, I was trying to explain this. I was trying to explain this to uh, to Keith Robinson. I go, you don't turn the woman. Women turn you out into yes. being a pimp. And uh-huh. it's like they tell you 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 have something you have that it. other exactly. other Monday. men don't you have. Ever, and they yeah. you ever hear Keith Robinson's story about how he tried to pimp? <laughs> Did you ever hear that? Where uh, <laughs> Keith, he, there were the prostitutes were on the corner. He was like a young kid, and he was like, he thought he'd like uh, nurture them or whatever. So he'd be like, he "Hey, let me get you some shit. juice. Yeah, let me get you some me, juice. You want a soda? <laughs> it's cold here. Let me get you some gloves. He's like, oh, thank you, thank you. And then, uh, and then one day he's like, "Bitch, give me that money!" And he slapped, he slapped one or whatever. 
And then she chased him down the block with a straight razor. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. his last. It was Keith Robinson's last day pimping. Yeah, because yeah. they, they they are they already knew he he didn't have it in him. Right, right. It's a it's a thing, and you see this even at a yeah, young age. It like it's yeah. a, you see that at a young age. Like even in elementary school, you could always know the kid. Yeah, just right. You know, the kid uh, Patrice right. used to say the mm-hmm. one that was he used to say his dude was Ricky. And they used to sing his name. Hi, Ricky. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it was just a mm-hmm. different vibe. And so that uh, so it's interesting, though, that yeah. that that became so understanding. So now you get into this therapy thing. What what was the so is it that you just didn't understand what your value was or? or... No, I mean, I, I always knew what my value was. Like, like I tell you before, women. Let me know what my value was. Right. But what? I had to understand was where her trauma was. Okay, now you you, you now let's get in because now we yes. we going deep. Go ahead. Now you have to understand. Most women who have been in relationships, they come from one guy that slapped them. Literally, I'm not, I don't mean really slap physical, but he beat up on. Uh, them. And it could be <laughs> that another guy beat up on them. That another guy beat up on them. Another guy beat up on them. And then when you get to them. You are now going to get the brunt of all the guys yeah. that beat up on her. So you're trying to figure, you're trying to want, figure out why is this chick acting like this? What, what's going on? Da, 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 da. Why, why does she feel the need to do all this? And then with therapy, the therapist will let you know it's not you. Mm. It's all of them. Right. And she doesn't even realize that it's all of them. It's not me. Right. So by, by going to that, I realized I, 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 had, I was gifted with the tools to deal with her and she was gifted with the tools to deal with what, what had happened to her. How did you get like, so was it an understanding that the therapist gave you? And then because you had, you had that, I mean, cause here's the bottom line, even that, that pimp, that, that pimp thing is mm. cause I, I used to tell this story years back. I remember I was dealing with this girl and she wanted to, she wanted to do Broadway very right. talented she's been yeah. on a bunch of stuff and she's done mm-hmm. movies with spike and she actually directed uh uh mike tyson's one man show like was mm-hmm. the, so um I, I saw him in vegas yeah yeah um but i remember i was dealing with her and she kept saying that she wanted to do she would always look at you know like musicals and then and she was like i'm better than her i'm better than her and i said mm-hmm. to her i said listen so um what do you want to do? And she said, I want to do Shakespeare in the park. And I was like, okay, well, how do you like, you know, you know how we are. Let's like, we're problem solvers. Well, yeah. let me gather information. I was like, well, how does one do Shakespeare in the park? And mm-hmm. she said, well, it's the public theater usually has it. There's a guy. And I go, how do you know this? She goes, oh, I interned for him. And I took classes with him when mm-hmm. I was in NYU. And mm-hmm. I was like, so you know this motherfucker? And uh-huh. she goes, yeah, I, yeah, no, I'm like, oh, well, why don't you, we, you know how to get him? Yeah, it was right at the public theater, right on over across from Blue Man Group um, yeah. on Lafayette Avenue where the Cube is. Uh-huh. And um, and I said, she goes, well, I had, this was back in the days before, before electronic press kits. She goes, well, I need a press kit. And I was like, oh, so here's, how much is it to get the press kit? I gave her a couple hundred dollars. She went and got the press kit. And I go, and she goes, well, I'm working. She got the press kit. And I was like, so here's what's going I said, did you go down to the public? And she was like, no. I said, well, understand this. I'm not fucking you again until you go down to the public and talk to this dude. Right. And she was like, you bugging. I go, no, I'm not bugging. You, you, you're going to have to go down. If you want right. to fuck me, you go. Yeah. So the pimp game works in positive ways, yes. too. Yes. And, oh, uh, yeah, definitely so. And she went down to... Uh, to the public, ran into the guys. The guy was like, oh, I'm not going to say a name, but he was like, oh, how you been? I was so good to see you. What are you yeah. into? And she was like, well, I actually was coming to see you. I was thinking about Shakespeare in the park. And he was like, he was like, well, we already booked up for that. But I, I uh, she goes, you have a, you should send me some information. She had the press kit. She gave him the press kit. Bam. She ends up um, doing this, this, this rock opera, uh, Passing Strange. Do you remember that? No. It was a theater, uh, like a rock opera called Passing Strange. And then she 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 got on it, went to Berkeley. And just from me depriving her of the dick, she yeah. ended up on Broadway. There you go. 
And then she did after that, she was able to do women in on the verge of a nervous breakdown. And she did some other things and she, you know, mm-hmm. the so but it was it was interesting just you know that me withholding yes it was like oh you going you going to do this yes and, yes and having to make her a decision so i'm, I'm curious yeah. about what it was so with her her so you were going to couples therapy correct and and he so did you have sessions with with the therapist by yourself as well did you have individuals or how did you no, come I, to know i only needed i really only needed one one therapy session okay and that was to understand her. OK. Now, did you work on yourself, too? Or, or? I worked on, on, on myself. Um, in learning how to love her. OK. Learning what she needed from me. You know, so what how did that take form? How did that take form? Through one therapy session. Okay, but like in what way? Like specifics? Like what did you well, recognize? When she gets triggered, okay. my natural reaction back then would be, bitch, shut the fuck up. Okay. Now it's more it's like... Seldom helpful. What, what can I do for you? What do you need from me? Okay. What is making you act this way? What is it that I can do to keep you at peace? Now, what was her? Was she able to articulate that, or did it take time yes, for her? Yeah, 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 she was. Okay, so she so was what, kind of ahead of the game as well, because I've I've also with, had women who who have not even recognized what their trauma was. Who who's head of the game? I mean, she was ahead of the game in the sense that she could she even recognize what her own given the opportunity. Oh no no no, no no no! She wasn't. She didn't, oh. she didn't recognize that until therapy. Uh okay. She didn't, she didn't recognize that everything that she was uh, attacking me with was not from me. It was from him. From the, the other guy dude, before him. The abuse that she had And the guy with. before him. And the guy before him. Now, you have to understand, abusers become the abuser. Oh, yeah. Well, it's funny. I say this all the time. I said, in an abusive relationship, there's two archetypes. There's the abuser and the abusee. A lot of times they don't care which archetype they play. They don't care which 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 how they're casted. As mm. long as both those archetypes. As long as there's are, some abuse there, some some right, drama. So so if they if they meet somebody who's more abusive, then they become the abused. If they meet mm-hmm. somebody who's 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 less abusive, then they become the abuser. Exactly. And, and, and they fill and, those and it, as soon as they right. fill both those architects. Right. That's it's a normalcy. They feel normal, even though mm-hmm. it's toxic. It there's a yes. normalcy in the toxicity. Normality, right. You are so correct. Yeah. So she became the abuser. Right. Because you weren't that. Her. That's because that's not how you you rock. Right. But she did not realize that until the therapist had brought it out to her. Uh. I mean, I mean, every man is always going to tell a chick that he meets. Listen here. Don't bring your trauma to me. Right. That's something you say. It's almost every, that's almost cliche. To yeah, say it's that. almost cliche. Don't bring your trauma to me. But none of what we don't know how to handle that trauma from her. There is a way that there is a way to combat it. And through the therapist, I learned how to combat it. So I now I know now I know what she needs from me and how to handle it when she gets into a situation where she feels uh, triggered. Which is the terms of the Listen, system. Drew, can we we're going to shut this down and then do like some out behind the scenes. Can yes. you plug whatever you want to plug real quick? All right. Um, let me see. Well, I'm on the cruise for the next couple of weeks. I will not be back here until after January. And I got some club days in New York City. And then I'm still on uh, on tour with Bill Bellamy. The I want oh. my life back. So as you can catch me on tour with Bill Bellamy, you can oh. catch me on Instagram at Drew Fraser 123 on IG. And check out my podcast itself, Two Drinks Left with Drew Crazy. Dope, dope, dope. Harry, real quick. Uh, go to all my stuff uh, at Harry Trajanian on all my social media. Uh, everything with me, Instagram uh, and Google me. You know how to get me. Uh, don't forget the one on one consultations. You hit me at DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You can book time with me. You know, y'all know how to find me. Just go on the website. You can find everything. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Don't forget the, the Patreon. The Patreon is uh, 
uh, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Get on that. Follow us so that we can keep doing this and support us because we've been supporting y'all. We are out.